Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, it's already you know end of uh, January. <laughs> it's already there. <laughs> Still New Year. We are broadcasting today on LinkedIn, YouTube, but also on Facebook because now you can do on StreamYard, you can do three different channels. I will check if everything goes well. If you be so kind and put in in the comments that uh, you can see us and hear us so we can start i will check also uh linkedin if, if linkedin works uh and, great and as and, you're checking i'm gonna send my regards from vienna tonight so if you see i'm in a hotel room and it's a little dark i apologize for that but you know it's like everybody hit 2023 running teams yeah. are ready yeah. they want to get started Absolutely. So maybe what we can do, we can start, I think, uh, with the with the team. Yeah, it, it looks like can somebody who is watching us from Facebook, you know, uh, tell us that it's Facebook is also alive because it looks like we have a uh, YouTube and LinkedIn. Yes, uh, we've let's got see, our Facebook there. Should, be, should be there, but I did not promote it Facebook separately. So maybe uh, there's a uh, you know less people on, on Facebook. Anyway, so uh, Lisa, let's kick it off. You know. Yes, we're here. Although I loved what you said. Is it or is it even the new year? Have we already forgotten that it's January? Because things come really fast, and already time has passed. It's almost been a month, and I find it really interesting because at the beginning of every year we have these New Year's resolutions. We want to join a gym. We want to find a new career. We want, you know, we have so many exciting ideas. And really, we're only a few weeks into January. And the big question is, how many of us are still continuing with those new changes, with those new habits, with those new resolutions? Absolutely. And the big question to that is, if you are, fantastic. How'd you do it? And if you're not, why not? We know from the research that the vast majority of us are not continuing to do it even just a few weeks into January. So Jan and I are here today to talk to you about, you know, we're sort of professionals in change and helping people to have good habits, healthy lifestyles. How can you make good habits and lasting changes to your lifestyle that support you in being your best self? So I'm happy to get started. I don't know, Jan, if you want to kick it off oh, either. Yeah. I, you know, eh... <laughs> There is a lot of uh, New Year's resolutions and people who want to change their habits, but change is not easy. No. And I, I tell you why. Because our brain is pattern recognition machine and we like the things which are the same all the time. So by definition, our brain doesn't like change. As a matter of the fact, what is you know happening with your brain, You, if you learn something, it goes like on stairs, you learn, and then you are on so-called homeostasis. Your brain likes very much to, 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 to consume as least as energy as possible. Because yeah. brain, people think we, we are still thinking. No. Brain number one is your tool to survive. That's priority number one. Then priority number two is it's your, you know, way how to budget energy, whether it's energy for physical movement or energy for some, you know, mental activity, you are budgeting, you know, energy. And and how it works, it's like, uh, you know, why pattern recognition machine? Because, you know, your brain without the senses, you know, would be would make almost no sense senses are able to give sense what's going on around you but also inside you okay now uh it's called exteroception that's what's going on around you uh, interoception what's going on with in, inside you mm -hmm. and what senses are doing senses are making sure you understand what's going on kind of making the photo those are not photos but you know in fact you are comparing electrical and chemical signals but imagine that something is going on around you and your dominant sense in that case would be your you know eyes right and you will you will make a photo and if you are 100 percent concentrated your brain is able to take you know the best photo similar photo or the same photo from this similar or the same situation from the past so 
it's really you are basically predicting based on what you what is your experience what is sitting already in your long term memory and if those two informations are on overlapping 100% chances are that you will react properly okay whether it's mental reaction or physical reaction and in fact based on that information your brain will budget energy for some physical movement will send some you know water salt and sugar to some parts of your body if it's mental then it's about your brain by the way brain is only uh, i believe two percent of our you know weight but it consumes up to 20 percent of our energy yeah. it's a lot you know for example if they measure chess masters how how much you know energy they consume it's really like you know 1500 2000 calories during those long matches even though they are sitting or maybe they are moving a little bit you know right so this is why change is tough you know uh, unless you learn how to make a change right because your brain likes predictability likes the thing as it as it goes because then you don't need to think about it and it goes you know like that right uh, what we know from science and from some research people will change if there is some pain you know already it's so painful that you cannot basically not survive but you cannot uh, be in that situation anymore you feel like there's a lot of pain and again it can be physical pain or it can be mental pain or if it's associated with the pleasure and the best way is to connect both like a pleasure and the pain okay you can easily say hey you know i wanted to uh lose 10 kilos it will be painful because i i will you know need to reduce my calories like i need to have a diet i need to move much more but at the end of the day the pleasure is i will have a more energy uh if if you you know uh, really believe that the look is important i will look better probably right <laughs> and and you will be healthier that's for sure but it's yeah, usually yeah. connection those two like it's it's usually challenging we, we need to realize that but it, it there is a pleasure at the end you know right but uh, uh what is important if you try to create new habit it's your decision to do it you know then it's repetition because in all languages we have like in germany we have ebook mach meister repetition is making master and it's the same with the habit uh in english we have you know uh we have uh, repetition is a master in fact right yeah. but you know decision and repetition is not enough because that's usually why people after sometimes are like giving up okay then the third part you need to have emotional connection basically to really say hey this is really important for me give you one example what i'm hearing i I'm, i was never smoking but what I'm hearing from some of my friends who stop smoking, they are basically saying that they made a decision. They use some, you know, bonbons or some sweet stuff or whatever, you know, in, in, but they are really able to repeat it, go like one day after the other. Plus, they basically, you know, and again, it's a pleasure and a pain together. They basically thinking about in the way that hey if i will stop smoke i will live probably longer and i will have a longer time with my gra grand children you know what i mean right with the, with the grand uh, children and and this is the the emotional you know part of that because uh, the the thing is uh, look uh one of my athletes yeri lahetska unfortunately he lost today in the in the oh. in the in the quarter final in the uh, Australian open but it's a huge success he, he will move from 71 to 39. It's a huge success for him. He beaten some top players and so on. Right? When he was playing the previous match with Felix Ogier, his coach, he, he was winning 2-1. to one, And his coach sent me like SMS, like, what, what's going on now? And I said, now, who that guy will win if there is a bigger, you know, emotional connection, a bigger laugh to tennis, you that guy will win. And it was Yiri, right? I tell you why, because, you know, those people who are having this emotional connection to that activity, they usually have what we call in psychology, uh, growth mindset. Growth mindset means 
that you are you want to be better version of yourself every day it's a principle of excellence if you have a fixed mindset you are very much fixated on the results which is okay if the results are good if the results are not good people with a fixed mindset very often giving up right that's that's the same with the habits right i, I try to relate it to the habits so if you have a fixed mindset if it's okay fine but if you are challenged boom I, I, i'm giving up if you have this you know uh, growth mindset it's like I will be better version of me like every day I learn every day. That means that you go and you basically, you know, concentrate on your performance on the way, not on the result. And in that case, you go like one present moment after the other. And that's why the, there is higher chance to be more successful with whatever if you have a strong emotional connection to because then you are you know in the flow i will explain it to you if you for example want to start the habit i want to run like you know every day every morning right so you need to decide you need to start to do it but you need to have like you know emotional connection because you know once you will realize that after you finishing there is a lot of endorphin release and you feel fucking good you know after yeah. the, the sport activity you really feel good right it's like a drug you know right and that 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 is emotional connection even though it's a tough activity but then you feel you know very good after the that activity so i think emotions are playing you know key role to overcome you know uh your basically to to beat your you know laziness if you will or your monkey because your monkey your monkey amygdala is survival machine are for my amygdala if everything is fine you were in those situations there is a no need to change anything so your your monkey is happy that's the problem that's why your monkey very often is pushing you down saying hey don't do it because you know it, it would not be you know safe or whatever how you can beat it is basically through the hormones okay now how hormones works okay whatever you do even if you have some thought or you're reading something or you have some action that means you know that that you know uh, that thought or that action means some emotion and it can be positive emotion like if you are looking forward to, to do that you know habit to change it or it can be negative emotion emotion means that some hormones will be generated if those hormones are like negative it's like cortisol and you are nervous or you are you no know, stress or whatever uh, that's ob obviously negative right on the other hand if you are looking forward then endorphin will be released if you are finishing that activity dopamine will be released and those you know hormones they have a very good impact <clears throat> on your life because hormones in fact are like you know emails to your genes okay <laughs> no really because your genes it's called epigenetics epigenetics means that your genes you know are not starting automatically it is at about five to ten percent of genes which are started anyway okay but majority of, of our genes are started based on environment and how you how you think what do you do and so on that's called epigenetics which means from latin like above the genes okay and those genes obviously you know are influencing your body your health you know this is it you know that's yes. that's, how, that's how it works it, it is interesting okay I'm saying that human beings, which is like paradox, human beings, we think that we should encourage ourselves. If everything goes well, we are like, hey, let's go, let's go, let's do more, whatever. That's fine. But Mother Nature, if everything goes well, whether it's in the sport or business, Mother Nature is taking care of that because endorphin, dopamine, and if it's like, you know, if it's flow among, you know, some team members, it's about serotonin and oxytocin. This is done automatically for you if th things are going well. You need to encourage yourself mainly if the things are not going very well. Okay. You need to create because one thing is your score, whatever score means, it, it can be some business scorecard or it can be sports score. Okay. That's one point. The other point is your feeling and your emotions. You can mix your hormones independent of your score mm -hmm. this is it right because if you if it's about body it's about breathing if you encourage yourself you know you still will you know fight and you will still continue that activity even though things are not going very well so those are two different things because the, your score ref, reflects past okay your hormones can reflect the future but you can change the future only here and now but you can really if you encourage yourself even in the tough situation this is it what you need to do 
That's why if, for example, you want to give up, like, hey, I don't want to do it or whatever, you know, right? You have, you have this tendency, hey, it's enough and it's, you know, it's not me, whatever. So you need to encourage yourself. You need to push yourself to do it because it is about, you know, it is not about your ability. It's about the, you know, chemicals in your brain and you need to change those chemicals. Last point, U.S. Navy, the U.S. Navy did very interesting, you know, uh, study, okay? They take uh, 20 soldiers, 10, 10, okay, one team was 10, the other was 10. And the first team got the message that the situation they go in, it's a threat, okay? The other team got a message, the situation is a challenge, threat challenge, one word, okay? Now, what happened? The first team performance dropped down significantly when they have heard it's a threat. Uh, the other team or performance went up and they started to measure hormones. Okay. In the first case, significantly cortisol was released. Once they felt like this is a threat, if it's challenge, then, you know, it's about testosterone. You see, even the words are playing and our perception of the situation. It's not the situation itself how you do with the habit, but it's your perception, how you view the situation. That's what is makes, you know, difference. And it's the same. That habit is, you know, it's very, you know, it's it's tough, whatever, you know, right? You may say it's a threat, you know, right? And it, 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 it's dangerous if I will do it. Or you may say, yeah, it's a challenge. I, I go and I will do it, you know, anyway, right? I'll do it. I, and more and more, you will do those things which are, you know, uh, first uh, seems to be impossible. You will see that almost everything is possible for you, you know, right? It's just your amygdala. But amygdala, it's funny thing with your, you know, brain, that amygdala, the emotional part of the brain, wants to protect you. That's why amygdala is pushing you down, saying, like, you will not be able to do it. Don't do it. Let it say, that's all bullshit bingo. It's not true, you know, right? You need to give your professor, the, the uh, logical part of your brain, chance to say no, you know, right? Uh, I am able to do it, right? And and this exactly. is it. Yeah. exactly. I don't even know where to begin because you've given so much information that is so important to know about the hormones and the brain and the body. So much of the time, people talk about habits and they're like, "Come on, just get motivated." And it's like, no, there's a whole science behind how to make change really happen. And the science is within the brain, within the body but you can control it once you know how to work with your brain, with your body, which is Jan just said, right? The amygdala takes over in the back. But Lisa, what we want Lisa, to, yeah. somebody, somebody is saying in Czech that you speak super English. By the way, she's American, you know. <laughs> I, he probably Maybe meant, you meant for you. you. Maybe he so meant I for you. Know. My, my English, <laughs> I'm like, English is a second language, but I don't care, you know. But Lisa is American, so it should be. And uh, uh, not, she's, not from only New York. That. She's, she's from New York, so it should be good. <laughs> not only should my English be good because I'm a native English speaker, but my dad was an English professor. All so right. if I so don't that, have good English, my God. <laughs> well, thank you. I'll take any compliments I can get. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so I love, Jim, what you were saying is I want people to remember this is a very easy way to think when you're going in to the boardroom, to a meeting, to the, you know, whatever, the tennis court. Am I going in playing to win? Do I have that positive energy, that power motivation? Do I have the dopamine? Do I have the testosterone? Am I going with power? Or am I playing to not lose? I have to protect. I don't want to lose my title. Right. What if I look stupid? What's... And when you do that, you're already in that amygdala phase. Cortisol goes up. That was that threat versus challenge. So anytime you're feeling stuck, all you have to do, change the words, this is an opportunity for me. What am I playing to win for? What's the opportunity here? I want to lose weight. Yes, it's painful in the moment. Fine. Almost ignore it, accept it, and move on. Yes, it's going to be painful. I won't get to eat desserts anymore. If you sit and you think, oh, I want that dessert. Oh, I didn't get to eat chocolate today. When am I going to eat chocolate? You make it hard for yourself. If instead you say, yes, it's hard. I accept it. I'm not going to pretend it's not hard, but I accept it for what is. And I'm going to super focus on that long-term gain. 
and I'm going to get that hit, that power hit. Instead of looking at the chocolate cake, easiest example for us to use, and seeing, oh, I'm missing. It's scarcity. I don't have enough of the cake that I want. Look at it as power. Every time that I don't have that, I am one step closer to my goal. Awesome. Give yourself an energy boost as you're making the change. Don't make it feel hard. Make it feel thrilling. And your body will begin to say, oh, I like that feeling. Let's do that again. So you run, not, oh, it's hard, but you run and you go, oh my God, I'm kicking ass. I'm running an extra kilometer than I was last time. And use that to keep your motivation going. Work with the science of your body, right? One super simple trick. You will start to lose willpower. Jan said it so perfectly. Our brains take up so much energy. And to try to save energy, what we end up doing is we try to make as few decisions as possible. So we keep things the same. We don't want to make things that are hard and take a lot of energy from us. So sometimes you'll wake up in the morning and you'll decide, oh, do I want to do that extra work? I know I said I wanted to build my career this year, but do I want to wake up at 5 a.m. and try to write an article for LinkedIn or do I want to get some sleep? If you're already asking yourself that question, you're going into the willpower trap. Do not have a willpower trap. Do not make it a decision. Actually, 100% commitment, I say I'm going to do it, I just do it. I don't think about it. I don't think about how hard it is. I don't think about whether I want to or not. Should I do it another day? Do I want to do it in the evening? All of that is wasted energy. It's much harder for you to be 99% committed than 100% committed because at 100%, you don't question, you do. Now, it doesn't mean you don't say, hey, I want to write on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I need to catch up on sleep, so Thursday, Friday are my days off. It doesn't mean you have to show up and beat yourself down. You can yeah. be reasonable. But 100% of the time that you say, I'm committed to doing this, you just show up and do it. Make that an automatic habit. Make that the routine for you. And all of a sudden, showing up is easy because you don't bring up all of those negative emotions associated with it and the willpower and the energy that you need to break it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think one other thing I want to add, and then I, I would love to do more dialogue with you as well. I think nudges are so important. So what does that mean? Make every single thing you're doing super easy. I'll give yeah. you an example. At Google, they have, you know, they're sort of famous for the food that they serve and how they have a lot of um, canteens and stuff around them. And what they did is in their break rooms, in their cafeterias, they put in their refrigerator and they made the front glass clear where the water was. And then there was something sort of blocking the bottom and that's where they had the soft drinks and other stuff. So it was still available to people. They still had choice. But they put a nudge in. You see the water. You, you start to crave the water. You go in. You grab a water. So they didn't even make you make a choice consciously. They just made it easy for you to make a healthier choice. They, there's a reason that you put fruits and vegetables at the front of a grocery store. Actually, the reason that they put them at the front of a grocery store is they think you're so excited that you bought vegetables, you'll also buy junk food later. But the point is, if you make it easy to grab, then people will do that. Put fruit out on your counter pre-cook um, some healthy foods and keep it in your fridge, right? Anything you can do to nudge it along instead of having your sixth cup of coffee for the day, which you know is too much caffeine, stack the decaf. Small, tiny things that just nudge you in the right direction because you don't have a decision point. It's just the right healthy thing is there for you right? Same with if you have a phone, if you start giving yourself a bedtime alert. Every time you get that alert, you might not go to bed at that exact time, but it does get you to go, oh, okay, I should start wrapping up. Whereas if you kind of know 10, 10, 15 should be your bedtime, but you let that slide, you let that slide, you help to have nudges that keep you accountable and going in the right direction. Make change easy, as easy as possible, and then you'll do it. So, Jan, I didn't even get to ask you yet. Did you have a New Year's resolution? I have like a couple. I do, in fact. I need to lose, and I decided at least 10 to 12 kilos, you know. I, I lost already two because I was almost, you know, 100. I have a lot of, you know, muscles, that's for sure. But, and I, interestingly enough, when I'm, you know, running, 
I still have, in fact, I started to run more and more. I have now, you know, new iWatches. I started to uh, run now more and more because I, I, I combine it with the Nordic walking. And the time is, you know, good, but uh, I, I really wanted to lose and I lost a little, like uh, two, uh, two kilos. I was on okay. Tenerife, so I gained another like kilo back, but it's now it's more okay. or less where I was like after two weeks of uh, uh, January. What Lisa said, uh, said, 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 I would, you know, add that it, you need to make it really easily accessible, even though with my wife, it doesn't work, you know, even though the very expensive dresses are somewhere you know behind the body <laughs> she goes immediately and she's picking up the most expensive stuff all the time i can guarantee she's got you. good taste she's got good absolutely, taste <laughs> absolutely and always if she's coming back i'm asking what was the price and she said it was hugely discounted i said what is the price no it was hugely discounted you know right yes. there was a huge discount anyway <laughs> so what you can do how you can you know combine it and you can use there's something we call in psychology fopo fear of other people's opinion, okay? But in this case, you can use it in your favor. And I tell you how. You can do basically what we call accountability partner. For example, if you want to start run every morning, let's have some friend who will run with you or is running already for many years and will ring the bell in the morning, 6 o'clock or 6.30 every morning. And if it's your friend, it is hard to say no or... You can do like, you don't need to do like every every day. If you want to, for example, lose the weight, you can say, okay, Joe, every Friday, I will have like five minutes call. How, how I'm going? You know, you're an accountability partner. So you 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 are a little bit under the pressure and you can use that FOPO in a positive way. Okay, it's called accountability partner. It's very good. And the other thing what you can do, you can do like public commitment. Again, again. Yeah. You will create like a pressure on you publicly. And then you will use that, you know, for what they will say if I will not, you know, reach it, right? And and I think it those are working in combination with or like have it uh, easily accessible. Like if you want to run uh, your, you know, uh, uh, T-shirt and everything, shoes close, you know, to your bed or, uh, you know, wherever you are. So there are no excuses in the morning, basically, right? To make to make it easy, like to kill uh, uh, your monkey, you know, right? What what your monkey is saying. Now, what what we I would add uh, one more study. Uh, there is a professor Emily Balcheris from New York University, and she is twenty five years studying human motivation. Okay, and what they figure out that if we do like if if we will say hey. I want to lose the weight. Oh, I wanted to learn English. Okay. Next year, I wanted to learn English so I can, you know, communicate. I can watch some videos on Netflix, whatever, right? So this, you you, you put together that big goal. You even visualize that goal. This is not enough because after some time, that's what she's saying about New Year resolution, that after some time, you're, you're, because usually if you are like, if you have like new goal, you know, you are like pumped up and even your blood pressure goes up. What they realize they, is after a couple of weeks, your blood pressure does not go up anymore, you know, right? It's, you are like, your brain thing, it, it's kind of the normal, and then you are dropping that activity. That's why you need to do what we call process goals. Process goal means that you will, like, every day do three new words. You will learn three or five new, you know, words. Three times a week, you go to the language school. You watch, you know, some new stuff like that. And every evening, you will like mentally, you know, check it out. Or you can even, you know, check it out in your, you know, uh, uh, in, in your uh, notebook, you know, right? Uh, or in, on your PC. And that's when, when you will realize, hey, this is the progress I made. Dopamine is released. And that dopamine is having two roles. Number one, you feel good that you did something during the day. And number two, you are dopamine is reward hormone, but also motivation hormone. So you are motivated to continue. That's that's what we know. That we it, it's good to have a big goals, but then you need to have like process goals. Like every what does it mean for every day? I go to the fitness if I want to lose the weight, or I I jog, you know, and stuff like that. You know, right? You need to do you need to do both. Simply. And I want to add here, so important in um, work is sometimes it's very demotivating in our jobs because there is no necessarily like end goal, right? It's like be successful is the goal. 
So you have to celebrate those small moment, moments. Yes, we got a new client. Yes, we finished that project. Right. Yes, we beat the competitor. Because if we're taking that for granted, yeah, 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 but we have to keep going next, 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 you are living in the hormones that keep you stuck and small and worried and scared and playing not to lose. You've got to have, like Jan said, in the process goals, you've got to have milestones that are worth celebrating and you've got to take the time to celebrate them, not because it's like nice for your team, but because you need to regulate the body to continuously give motivation. Otherwise, why bother? You give up. You know what I have on my on my T-shirt today? Be nice, train nasty. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, I, you, you, you're smiling, but it's true. Love if you it. want to make progress in your life, it's about creating new habits and moving out of your comfort zone all the time, you know, right? Because whenever you change something and you are moving to the unknown territory, you are changing something. It's all the time. In fact, you know, the, the, the best tennis players or best athletes, they try to be in the flow, in the zone, even during the training, because zone is tough moment but you are very talented for that activity right okay so that that's why you know moving out of the comfort zone is important because you at, at some point your you know brain will again say hey i want to be in the, the homeostasis and then you need to create something new that's why if you are you know curious curiosity is helping with you know change and with creating new habits because Curiosity means, hey, I'm curious and I would like to, to start to do something different. Plus, curiosity is like cooling down your amygdala because amygdala in the nutshell is about, it's telling you, okay, you have only chance because amygdala is about stress. You have chance to fight, to flee, escape, or to hide somewhere. Okay, those are three things. So it goes like with your brain, this is negative zoom in. What, you know, curiosity is doing is positive zoom out. You know, curiosity is about, hey, I have more options, you know, right, than to do that, that, that. I have much more options. And that's why curiosity is great for the creativity because it's about asking new questions and stuff like that. But it's also good, you know, to be mentally tough and to really, you know, try new things all the time. I couldn't agree more. I love to put myself in the danger zone. Um, and one of the ways to do that, I love that you said curiosity helps you to zoom out. Another thing that helps you to zoom out and remember your long-term goals, this sounds silly, but actually they know through studies on financial planning, you should save for retirement. Well, guess what? A lot of people don't. They think about right now I need to pay the bills. Right now I want you know a new handy. And actually what they've figured out is if they take a computer and they generate a picture of you, but at retirement age, and then you see yourself, you can actually, not just like in theory, sometime I'll get older, but you actually see yourself, you will start saving for retirement. Same thing, I don't know, Jan, similar to what you're doing. My husband really wants to get fit, of course. He looks at um, Instagram, so he looks at bodybuilders, and he's like, whoa, okay, that's my inspiration. That's where I want to get to, right? Yeah, can you see my muscles? <laughs> yeah, you got them. We should not arm wrestle. I think I'll lose. <laughs> And so, you know, you keep these visual pictures. Not, it's not like a theoretical idea of your goal. Make it something concrete. You can see, you can really start to understand. Exactly. The, the brain has trouble seeing into the future. Because our, our, our brains are, you know, having, this is called mirror neurons. So we are mirroring other people. For example, if I exercise at home, I exercise much longer if I watch the other people to exercise on the screen. Yes. This is it. It's it's easy as it is. And today on the YouTube, we have a lot of exercises like with the with the weights or you know with some uh, bands stuff like that. You know, right? So you are you are absolutely right. You know. Yes, and actually, I joined a gym, even though we have a gym in our own house. Because I like the group fitness better. It's more motivating for me. So this is the other thing that feels really important is sometimes with our heads, we think, what's the most efficient? What's the most rational? What's the most cost effective? And we make decisions with our heads. And then it doesn't really work out. We can't seem to find our motivation or we can't get those like hits of power and excitement. Instead, let your body lead 
What do you naturally notice really gets you excited? What do you notice gets you passionate? And then start to work from there. Because most important is, as we've been talking about, that you get a reward. Now, on the other side, when we talk about changing habits, sometimes you have a bad habit, eating too much, smoking, working until 10 o'clock at night. Sometimes you have a bad habit that you want to quit. And the problem is, some part of you wants to quit, but another part of you is like, but I like smoking. I don't want to quit. Yeah. So, you know, we have a, a routine. It gives us a reward. And then we have some cue that sets us up to want to go to the routine. So let's say I've had a long day at work. This happens a lot. People say, I come home from work and I just want to relax. It's been so stressful. I just grab a glass of wine without thinking. And all of a sudden, one glass becomes two. And it turns out every night in order to unwind from a hard day, I only think about and look forward to my several glasses of wine, right? And they say it's unhealthy. And I know it interrupts my sleep. I don't want this, but I want this. <laughs> so, okay. The cue is I'm tired. I'm coming home from work. The routine is you take some drinks and the reward is you feel relaxed for that yeah. moment. Keep the cue. I come home from work. I'm feeling stressed. Replace the routine and replace it not with something that you don't like, that you hate, because you need it to replace it with something that gives you a similar reward. So what could you replace it with? I come home and I am... Lisa, we are losing you now. It's getting still, you know. Hello. And we lost you totally, I think. Anyway, so let guys, let's continue because I <laughs> Lisa. Have I cut out? Yeah, you cut out and the uh basically the, the screen is still now it's it's okay, but it looks like you have a problem with connection. I think I'm back. Yeah, but it's not sharp, you know, the picture. Wi-Fi in hotels are pretty terrible. I'm, I apologize to you all for that. Um, like a, I said, I work... Some, yeah, there is some question, maybe. Guys, you know, feel free to ask questions. That's absolutely fine. I will, uh, you know, bring it here. I guess it is much more easier to find interest or get excited in the things you like. What about opposite? Thanks for your answer and all the best. If we don't like the things. Yeah, this is very interesting question. And I I tell you, you know what? Uh, for example, one thing, if you wanted to lose the weight, it's about to eat, you know, like seven o'clock in the evening last time. Like we should not eat three hours, you know, before we go to sleep, basically, right? So mm -hmm. What, what I'm doing, I like very much, you know, to uh, basically uh, brush my teeth with the electronic, you know, uh, brush, uh, uh, you know, uh, tool, right? And if I do it like seven o'clock, that means for my brain, it's like from now on, it's only water or the tea, no food, you know, right? So what do you need to do basically to connect kind of, you know, negative which may be perceived by my brain hey i can't eat anymore you know right seven o'clock and you know right but on the other hand it's cut by something i like and it's it's like you know brushing my teeth you know right it, at, at seven and once you do it it's like hey I, I would brush you know one more time this is it you need to connect it to some other you know activity and then obviously for example it, because i'm i lost you know like 15 kilos when i you know left uh mental hospital like 11 years ago i gained because i i lost like 30 kilos but then i gained obviously it's like yo-yo effect okay it, it is yeah uh and then i then i you know lost again and then i was stable with my weight but during the covid that was interesting because i was still doing the same sport and i gained probably like three kilos every year you know and <laughs> years right and I tell you why, because if I am like presenting, I walk a lot. It's a lot. It's a different consumption energy pattern, right? Now, again, I, 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 you know, today, for example, only with the sport, I did like 1600 calories already, right? I'm not counting all other. It will be like altogether probably almost 4,000, you know, right? Uh, you know, and, and this is it. You need, you really need to connect, you know, your starting habit 
to something which is already existing and you like it. You're, that's that's how it goes. Because what, what you need to do, I tell you how the habit is represented in your brain, okay? You need to create new synaptical connections. And they are very weak. If you start with like New Year and you go a couple of times to the fitness or whatever, you have some synaptical connection. Those are, you know, uh, synapses are connections among your, you know, neurons, okay? And more and more you do it, more you do repetitions, those synapses are getting stronger. And then it's stronger represented in your brain. And it's harder for you to say no, whatever. You will start to like it simply. Okay. If those synapses are really very strong, there is something called myelin created. And then you will be able to do your habit, even though you will be like tired or whatever. You just do it. it it's like because will is great, but you know you cannot you know compete with your will all the time because sometimes you know. But it's if it's automatic, this is it, right? I give you another example. Uh, one of the guys who are really like top in terms of the present moment concentration are surgeons, especially like cardio surgeons. I have a friend of mine, uh, Jan Perk. He's able to perform in the same way whether it's easy surgery or very tough one, maybe there's a, you know, internal bleeding or we know what I mean, right? Tough, you know, uh, operation. He's still able to be in the present moment and do his best job. Why? Because of the repetition he did, he's, you know, operating, he's doing surgeries for more than 50 years. And those, you know, synapses are connected so strong that for him means like, hey, there is some obstacle, but I will do it. I do and I will do it because it's like automatic machine already, you know, right? So this is it, you know, it's like, uh, if, you know, people didn't know 50, 100 years ago what we know today about the brain, but they were very smart. That's why we have like in German, as I said, ebook mach Meister. In English, repetition is a mastery. You need to repeat, even though you have like you have some activity, you have a talent for talent is only potential. You need to basically that talent created from that talent. You need to create a skill or the strengths right from from that talent because talent is basically uh, uh, your gene. So the talents are the genes, and you need to start the gene and repeat and repeat and repeat again. It's about epigenetic. What do you what do you do and which in which environment you are living? Lisa, are you there? Oh, la la. Yeah, I mean, perfect. Very short, add to that, if that's okay. I would first things first. It's I keep cutting, cutting out. I apologize. I'll see if out. I can do something to make it a little bit better. I'll talk. So one of the things that we um, are absolutely working towards is how do you find meaning in the work that you do? So maybe you've heard this story about a guy who was laying bricks. He was so bored. Oh, day after day, it's the same. You slap some stuff on, you put a heavy brick on every day, and it feels like we're never making progress. And it's just awful. And another guy said, oh, I love showing up to work every day and doing the exact same brick laying because I know that we're building, you know, this shrine to our God. So the actual work, not so great, but I know that what I'm building has a bigger meaning, a bigger purpose. Exactly. So sometimes you can get motivated by the end result and not just the actual doing. Sometimes you can just make it fun. So, you know, my daughter's doing homework, fine. You don't want to do your math homework. Let's see how much you can do in 10 minutes. Well, now it's not doing math homework. It's a competition. Can I beat the clock? Yeah. So you yeah. find ways to make the work a little bit fun. Sometimes I have to pay bills or go through my taxes or things that I don't want to do. So I'll invite some girlfriends over and we'll do all that work that we all hate and can't stand. But at least that we're doing it, you know, having some fun, drinking some coffee as we're doing it. So it makes it not as painful. And the last thing, I think Jan said it perfectly, just don't even think twice about it. If you have to do it, don't fight it. Don't wish you didn't have to do it. Don't think about how hard it is. Just do it. And then it's done. <laughs> the more that you put it off, the more that you give it weight. Oh, I don't want to do Oh, I'm not good at numbers. I hate doing the monthly budgeting. Oh, whatever it is. 
the more emotional negative weight you give it, the harder it feels. Remember, your goal to make it sustainable is to make it as easy. Yeah, yeah. Make it game. absolutely as easy each step along the steps. Lisa? All right, let me see if I can fix it. It's, it's getting cut again, you know. Yeah, uh, you know, you 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 talk about like making it uh, automatic, right? I'm gonna and... do my best to fix it. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, I will, you know, mention a couple of things, and you may think about, you know, where you are. There are six, you know, basic human needs, and what what is interesting, those needs are going a little bit out in couples. And they go against each other. Okay. So uh, that the first couple is connection. We want to be connected to the other people. Okay. Because th those, you know, needs are important in creating our habits. Okay. So connection means you want to be connected to the other people. Because human beings, we like to be with the other people. And in fact, our brains are wired to help other people. This is it. So we want to be connected. So connection is one, you know, but we would like to be also significant. We would like to be recognized for what we do. Okay. So the first pair is connection versus significance, right? And imagine on one side you have connection, like 100%. On the other, you have significance. So try to figure out where you are because it's kind of the scale, right? Okay. That's, that's the first pair. It's connection, significance. The other pair is, we like certainty. Our brain does not like the change. Okay. Right. That's clear. So we like certainty. On the other hand, we like surprise. Okay. We like uh, things like in the surprise or we like, you know, uh, we like Christmas, you know, uh, presents and stuff like that. So the other, uh, the other pair is certainty on one side. And uh, on the other side is uh, variety, okay, uh, right? So you need to figure out, hey, am I the guy with, you know, more certainty or with, with variety? I think we lost now, Lisa, definitely, because it's still. Lisa, are you still there? Hey, we are, you know, uh, getting closer. And the, the last pair is the growth. I'm you would still like sure. Uh, but it's it's getting really cut. Uh, the, the last pair is like your personal growth versus contribution to the other people, right? Those are like six, you know, basic human needs. And if you, uh, she, she, you know, log out and maybe if she will log in from the different, you know, room, uh, she'll still be back. And, but uh, what I wanted to say that those, you know, three pairs are like six basic human needs. And you need to figure out where you are, whether you are more to connection or more to significance, more to certainty or more to variety, more to your growth or more to contribution. Usually it's somewhere, you know, in between. But it's good. Once you will do that kind of the assessment, you know, you will also figure out how to, ah, I will put Lisa looks uh, to be back now. Can you hear I'm us? Back. I hope it works. Perfect. Let's see. So, Lisa, what I was talking about, about those six basic human needs, connection and significance. And you know the, the scheme. Uh, certainty, variety, growth, and, you know, contribution. Because, you know, it, it is a good tool to realize kind of the, who you are so you can figure out what is the best way to create new routine, new habit, right? That's, uh, that's what I said when you, you are not here. Amazing. I add here that human needs, if I'm not cutting out still, it, it is, is autonomy out. and choice. Yeah. Any other wireless options? I, unfortunately, Look, I've tried we, to switch. It's like, yeah, look, try it one more time. It's like we have nine more minutes, so it, it doesn't matter. I will, you know, continue, and uh, if you will be able to get, you know, back, that would be good, but otherwise, you know. Okay, good. guys. Then let me I, just add this. Okay. Go, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. Now it seems, okay. now it seems, no, no, no. Let's, let's, let's try. Let's try. <laughs> 
Let's try. Let's see. Super yeah. important to this. So we've talked about make things super easy and small. Give yourself nudges. Set yourself up for success. Don't worry about thinking about do I want to do it or not. 100% commitment. You just do it. Yeah. You get motivated. You figure out a long-term goal. You get excited about it. You celebrate the wins along the way. These are all the ways that you can make this change really sustainable. But what we haven't talked about yet is that it's very important you feel it is your choice. Nobody's forcing you to be on a diet. Nobody's forcing you to work 14 hours a day, even though it might feel like it. It's a choice you're making. And so when you're showing up, oh, I have to go exercise again. Oh, I have to go do another presentation. Just the opposite. Hey, I'm choosing this. This is something that I want. I want this. I'm showing up with my choice. I know those words sound a little bit the same or a little bit different and like, what's the big deal? But for your brain, it's a very big deal. We don't, yeah, we the victim happening. We feel like it's happening to us. That is not a powerful. Okay, so I, will I, I think now I can read the mind of Lisa, what she said. That basically, if you if you saying, "Hey, it's my decision," so it's not happening to you, but you are like you know decision making on this process. But guys, anyway, I want to touch uh, one book which can be very helpful for you, not only in creating you know the right habits, but in your overall life. And that book name is "The Seven Habits of the Most Effective People," and it changed my life thirty years ago, right? And those, it's from, you know, Stephen Covey. Unfortunately, he passed away. Lisa, uh, can you hear us? The hell? <laughs> this is funny. Again, it's, it's broken. Uh, technology is uh, against us. Anyway, so let, let's talk about seven habits of the most effective people. The first habit he talks about is proactivity, which means like you have a circle of your influence. Those are the things you, you're influencing. And around you have a circle of your interest. And it's good to push the circle of, of influence towards the circle of your interest. In, uh, in one sentence, basically get out of your comfort zone. Okay, so be proactive. The second habit is start with the end in your mind. Start what you want to achieve with the vision, basically, because vision is the engine. If we are like you have a vision and then you create those process goals, how to get there step by step, this is it. So and in mind is another habit. Then he talks about, you know, what, what you do with your time, that you should concentrate on things and your tasks, which are not urgent yet, but are important. Because if you concentrate on what is urgent and important, you are not using properly your brain because you are still under the pressure. But if you concentrate on non-urgent, but important question, he calls it strategic quadrant, basically. He, it, it talks about imp importance and, uh, you know, urgency. And obviously things which are not important, we should not do at all, right? Sometimes you need to do things which are urgent and important, for sure. You know, there are some fires all the time, you know. But if you want to use your brain in the best way, it's good to do it non-urgent, but important. I'll explain. It, I'm able to prepare my presentation. If I present to some company on Monday, I can do it like Sunday evening. And they'll be very happy. But I will know personally that I was using my brain on only on like 25 to, uh, sorry, uh, 75 to 80 percent, right? Because I would be under the pressure. But if I do it differently, if I will do do it in the following way, like, hey, I do strawman of that presentation three weeks before, then two weeks before some slides, and then I will do some notes. This is the way how you can use your brain in the best way, right? Because you are using everything what is in your brain. So nor urgent and important. Those three habits are creating because we are born as dependent. And those three habits, if you manage them, then you are independent. Okay. And the other three habits are the habits you create some relationship with the other people. And you create interdependence, the great relationship with the other people. Okay. So the fourth habit is about win-win. Whatever are the situation. You should try those situations to be always win-win, both, both part like I win, you win. Those are like long-term, you know, building long-term relationships. So win-win is another one. Uh, then uh, the fifth habit is about 
listening first before you talk, you know, right? Listen, you know, first before you talk. It's like making sure you listen to the other people and then you like summarize what they are, you know, talking and, and add what you want to say. So listen first. The sixth habit is about synergy that if, you know, you create in the teams with working with the other people, if you are like complementary, my strengths are covering your weaknesses and the other way around, you know, then, then means there is a lot of, you know, synergy and uh, yeah, and, and you are stronger together. And the last seven habit, it's like sharpening the saw, which, which is working with your energies, physical, emotional, mental and spiritual, spend that energy but renew that energy. Again, you know, this is a great book, you know, Seven Habits of the Most Effective People, which will help you to create, you know, new habits, but also use those habits in day-to-day uh, -day, uh, life, right? Uh, Marek Koniček is uh, saying something. Thank you very much. Both are very interesting points. Even Lisa had some connecting issues. Thank you for your inputs and remarks. Internet connection in hotels are unfortunately a huge privilege of traveling. Uh, unfortunately, I can confirm that. That's true. I think for, in general, internet connection in the hotels is good, like for internet or for browsing. But for those things, if you are like broadcasting, whatever, that sometimes it's very, uh, very, uh, you know, tough to uh, manage that, right? Uh, anyway, if you have uh, any other questions, we have like two or three, you know, minutes, shoot the, the question. If not, uh, I will, you know, uh, uh, kind of just summarize and uh, give you uh, one more, you know, tip. It looks like uh, there are no other, you know, questions. So uh, basically, if, if, if we are creating new habit, we can use two great tools. We have our imagination and our memory. You can basically imagine, you know, you can memorize your future, which sounds crazy. How can I memorize something? which did not happen yet. You can, because vision is the picture of the world which does not exist yet. So if you will visualize, for example, how you manage that habit, you wanted to learn English. So if you will vi visualize every day how in one year you are able to speak English, to listen, you know, uh, some news, watch some Netflix movies and so on, that visualization will have vision is the picture of the world which does not exist yet but we, we believe in that picture. So visualization is one point. And then the other point is that people who are successful and who are successful in creating new habits, there are three common things. Number one, they understand who they are. Number two, they understand, Lisa, talk about the meaning in your life. They understand what they want from the life. And number three, they can take decisions to use who they are to achieve what they want, basically. And that's the same with the habits. Try, you know, if you have some strengths, if you have some talents, try to use those talents, even in those, situ if those situations are not, you know, uh, you don't like uh, creating that new habit. Try to create that new habit, you know, through your talents, okay? I will give you uh, some examples, okay? I, uh, for example, my uh, talent are uh, vision and strategy, okay? And I basically, what I do, if I wanted to lose those 10 kilos, I visualize that if I will, you know, run, I will run, you know, faster and it will be easier and it will have a more energy. Mm -hmm. That's visualization. And strategy for me, that means I really keep an eye on the, uh, you know, calories, that's one point, you know, uh, and the other point is I need to, you know, move, uh, right, and do a little bit more. I do a lot of sport. Uh, on the other hand, I am a human being like you, so my weakness is probably sweet stuff, so I do sometimes chocolate, but I can, using my strategy head, I can say, okay, what does it mean? I will not do milk chocolate, but I will do like one, you know, uh, line of you know uh, dark chocolate and that's absolutely fine if you have a lot of calorie expenditure so that's kind of <coughs> sorry example how you can use it so ladies and gentlemen uh i will it will be safe on youtube linkedin and facebook uh, all of uh, the discussion next time i believe lisa will be already at home so it should be uh without any problems we have like 40 45 minutes without the problems and it started the, the network started uh, to have some issues. 
thanks very much for you uh, that you were with it, us and uh, we are looking forward in two weeks uh, to be back uh, with you again. Bye and good night.